welcome to Columbus, Ohio, on the campus of the Ohio State University for an exciting men's gymnastics dual meet, two top seven programs. Your host, Ohio State at number seven and Nebraska at number five. They could make a little history for the Corn Huskers. And as we take a look at the Big Ten standings, I'll tell you why. Nebraska with a win today over Ohio State for the first time ever will win a share of a Big Ten title. They would share it with Illinois, who earned their share last week. Hello, everybody. Dean Linky with the legend that is John Roethlisberger, a three-time Olympian, four-time Big Ten all-arounder. And how about Nebraska? You know, they entered back in 2011, and Chuck Chamelka saying he wouldn't mind bringing home those T-shirts and the hats. Yeah, he wasn't shy about that. He wants to get the first Big Ten title for Nebraska. It'd be a regular season title. Obviously, they want the tournament title later this season, but a lot on the line for them. They really want this, and it's also late in the season, Dean. It's time to put up if you're Ohio State and Nebraska and show that you get you can contend for the Big Ten title in a couple weeks. So let's start with Nebraska and put an eye on the athletes that you're going to feature, JR. Yeah, for Nebraska, Taylor Kostopoulos. This guy is the real deal. 2023 Big Ten Gymnast of the Year, former national team member. He'll try to make that national team again later this year. He really is a leader for those Cornhuskers. Sam Phillips as well. I love this young man's gymnastics. He's currently ranked fifth in the all-around nationally, and he's got big-time stuff just like that. He will also do five events for the Cornhuskers today. Cooper Giles, and he is on an event, the Pommel Horse, maybe the most important event in men's gymnastics, and he can go big here. That one routine could be a difference maker tonight. He's currently in the top 10 in the nation. And for the home team, the Ohio State Buckeyes. So like Taylor Kostopoulos, Cameron Nelson for the Buckeyes is a big time all around gymnast. He flies on the vault in the floor exercise, only gonna do three events tonight, but he will still be big for the Buckeyes. Donovan Hewitt, Dean, I know you love this guy. His biceps have biceps <laughs> and he excels on the still rings. He will be fun to watch there and we'll put up a big score for them. And finally, Caden Spencer, he is big time on a couple events, but in particular, the high bar where he is ranked in the top 10. Also has some Olympic pedigree in his family, his mom and his grandfather, both Olympians for Bulgaria. Great job, JR. And as we take a look at the national rankings, and it's an easy nod to make our State Farm State of Success. Three, four, five, six, and seven for the Big Ten teams. Yeah, Big Ten has really been the epicenter of men's gymnastics for a long time. and. You know, they're going to be right in there, too, just uh, at, as the season comes into the postseason, NCAA championships. Look for one of these teams to push Stanford, Oklahoma for that title. It's important to remind everybody that in men's gymnastics, you do not have the opportunity to slip. It's five up, five count. Yeah, it is uh, it is a uh, very tough format for the men. And here how, here's how uh, scores are come up with. Ten points is the execution score. All the deductions you see, the landing deductions, the bent legs, the form breaks, falls from apparatus come out of that 10.0. On the opposite side of that is the difficulty score. You add up the values of the 10 most difficult skills that the gymnast does. Each of them has a numeric value. You put those together, you add that to what's left of that execution score, and that is the gymnast total score. It's complicated. We'll try to keep it simple as we go through the competition, but uh, it's going to be some great world-class gymnastics tonight. Chuck Chamelka, 15 seasons as the head coach, but he's been around the program forever. He was a gymnast at Nebraska as well, graduating there in 1982. He's assisted by another legend, Jim Hartung and John Robinson, replaced Sir Francis Allen, who won quite a few national championships. And there's the Ukrainian Olympian, Rustam Sharapov, 13th season as the head coach, spent some time at Oklahoma, but you can tell he now bleeds scarlet and gray. I mean, he comes from a, a background of just elite gymnastics, Olympic champion on the parallel arts. Beat my teammate in 96, actually, for that gold medal. Jair Lynch got the silver. I don't think he's forgiven Rustam for that to this day, but, but he is a, an incredible gymnast and a great coach, and he's done a great job there at Ohio State. First rotation will be the floor. As most of you know that have been following men's gymnastics, they made the switch last year in the Big Ten where it'll be both teams starting at the same apparatus through all six rotations. It'll be Zach Snyder, a freshman from Swisher, Iowa, who has a career in season high of a 13-8, his last meet. He had a 13-3-5. 
two freshmen and a sophomore in the first three for Rustam and the Buckeyes here to start, John. Yeah, they actually have a pretty young lineup. They have, have about 18 gymnasts, assuming they keep their lineup the same here, that are underclassmen competing today. And, you know, this late in the season, you got to put your best lineups up, and that means they have a young team that's got some great young talent. Floor exercise is, is about big skills like every event, but the, the critical part here is landings like that. If that foot went out of bounds, which I did not see a flag go up, that foot out of bounds would be one tenth. But the landing, so that little hop is going to cost them. So a small hop or a small step, roughly the width of your shoulders, would be about a tenth of a point off in deductions. Anything bigger than that is going to go to three tenths. There's also a five tenth deduction. Obviously, a fall is the biggest deduction. That would be one point off. Was clean. That's exactly how you want to land. That's probably a three tenth hop to the side again. Triple twist dismount. That was a good starting routine. Gave up some landing deductions. May have gone out of bounds on one pass. But again, you want to hit, and then you want to start building scores from that first routine on. And this beautiful double twisting double back. And right there, I, I think I see a little red in there in between his foot and the sideline, so he may have been safe. Decent start. Nebraska, fifth in the nation on the floor. They'll start with Toby Liang, a sophomore from Roswell, Georgia. A career high, season high of 14.05. His last meet, he had a 13.7. As you see, just like Ohio State, they've got youngsters to start. They do. I've known Toby for quite some time. Mr. Roswell Gymnastics, been to my summer camp many times and have had a, had a good time watching this young man come up in the ranks. Been a national team member for Team USA as well. Another double twisting, double back, but that landing, maybe a tiny movement of the foot, but it's pretty good. Combination passes, big part of floor exercise as well. You can see that two and a half twist to a punch front layout. I can tell you that Snyder for the Buckeyes in with a 13-5. Nebraska coming off a fantastic meet against Illinois where they took home five event titles against the Illini. Double twist down the side. We saw the same side pass from Zach Snyder. In the leadoff routine for the Buckeyes. And a tough Arabian double front with a half twist out at the end. He likes it and he should. This is the double twist and double back. You're going to see similar skills. That was fantastic. I don't know that I would take a landed deduction there. However, Dean, as you will notice, the judges find a deduction just about <laughs> on every skill. So we shall see. I'll go back to Jesse Pakelli, 14.25 career high, season high, coming off of 13.4. done there. You can see those toes digging into the mat when he lands. The other thing to look for when they land, it's not just whether their feet move. What's the body position that they have? Are they very bent over? Great flare sequence there. Cut it off a little bit at the end. What's their body position? Do they bend over too far? Are their shoulders too close to their knees? If you are, that is also a deduction. Can be as much as three-tenths of a point. Even if it's a stuck landing, that was perfect. Pakali, a sophomore from Hawaii. That was clean. To give you an idea of the deduction, Zack Snyder got a 13-5. His routine 
in the leadoff spot for Nebraska. Started at a 15-4, so they found almost two points off. That routine, in my opinion, should go higher. Score should build for that. He starts at the same start value, but I believe he did it just a little bit cleaner than his teammate. Take a good look at this flare sequence. Flare right up to a handstand. Dean, I worked on that for so long, and I could never do it without hitting my foot on the ground. It was so frustrating. I see the guys do it now. They make it look so easy. Yeah, I never hit my foot on the ground. You never did. <laughs> Luke James, the sophomore from South Africa, who in the last meet set his season and career high of a 14-6. Nebraska, third in the Big Ten out of five teams. Ohio State dead last on the floor. However, Nebraska fifth nationally, Ohio State seventh nationally. That's how good all these Big Ten teams are. Yeah, Toby Liang, a 14-2-5 for his start score. So right off the bat, Nebraska with almost a one-point lead on the Buckeyes. That's a new career high for Toby. Long way to go, though. Another double-double. That used to be the biggest skill done on floor not all that long ago. And now everybody does it. It's almost compulsory. Oh, a three-and-a-half twist. And that was some legit break dancing to stay on his feet right there. I don't know how he didn't go to the mat. Good save, but still going to be a significant land induction. Tenth hop, however, on that landing. Triple twist to finish. That's what I'm talking about, the shoulders. His feet did not move, but see how far he bent forward on that landing? That is probably a deduction. Waving those arms can open you for a deduction as well, but great fight. A double twisting, double back. So two flips, and each flip has a twist on it. That's where it gets the double double. And there's the three and a half, so hard. I mean, how? That was pure Jedi mind trick right there. I don't know how he didn't touch his body to the floor. Well, after Liang put up that 14-2-5, you were thinking the Cornhuskers were going to roll, knowing that they can earn their first ever share of a Big Ten title. This includes also the Big Ten championships where they've never won. Nebraska is always good in the NCAAs. JR as well. They've had some great finishes over the last several years, but Chuck said for whatever reason, winning that hardware from the Big Ten has not been there. They're pretty fired up. Yeah, they absolutely want that regular season title, a share of that regular season title with Illinois. And we've been at many Big Ten championships, you and me, Dean, and we've talked about Nebraska. We've talked about Chuck and his team, and we've heard a lot of great things coming out of Lincoln. And they've had the athletes, but it's, again, it's unforgiving. We talked about five up, five count. Five gymnasts go, all five scores count. If you just got done watching the women at the Big Ten Championships last weekend, you'll see that they get to drop a score. If they have a miss, they can drop that score. So men, very unforgiving. You can have a great meet, but a couple falls and, and you're out. Yep. Amen. We move back to the Buckeyes, the second freshman out of the first three. This is Chase Davenport Mills. He's a freshman out of Georgia with a 13-2-5 career and season high. He's coming off, though, a 12-8. Very nice start. John, he needs to forget about that 12-8, right? Like, totally put that in the rearview mirror. You got to have a short memory, and it goes for every sport. You're going to have mistakes, and you're going to have bad routines at different points, and you got to learn from it, and you got to go out there and do the next one. But I'll tell you what, he's clearly forgotten about any mistakes in his past and certainly learned from them so far here today. This looks great. Nice skill there. Fedorchenko, triple Russian, we call that. Beautiful. 
You can see one of the coaches from Ohio State, Casemiro Suarez, in the background. He loves it. That was a beautiful triple twist dismount. About as good as you're going to see. It's a small hop. I love this. Front full right into a double front and feet perfectly together. Probably a one-tenth hop. Here's a whip to an Arabian double. I love how he keeps his feet so tight together when he lands. Great impression on for the judges. Doesn't give them a lot of areas to take deductions. He's supposed to start from a 15-4 on that. We will see what the judges take out of it. It should be into the 14s, in my opinion. I thought that was really well done by the freshman, Chase Davenport Mills. We move to another freshman, Chase Mondi from Lawrence, Kansas. 13-9-5-0, career high, season high, and that was his score in the last meet. Beautiful. Full twisting double layout and a dart into that floor. Did not move. No deductions on that first pass. Struggled a little bit there. That low landing squatted too deep. That's going to be a deduction. Man, he can find those big passes, though. Chase also starts 15-4. So good at those landings. You see him slide his feet together. Didn't quite get him all the way slid together, but tried. A two and a half twist punch front layout of pass. We see a lot of athletes doing as well. Kind of like the tuck, double twisting double back. Another Arabian double front half out, and man, check his feet for some Velcro. This kid can stick the landing. And on big skills like this one, full twisting double layout, and just check this out. Boom. There might be a judge who made a mark in his paper, but he was wrong to do that. That was perfect. That may be a little low with the shoulders, but that was a fantastic routine. That is a type of routine where, hey, look out at the Big Ten Championships. He's going to push the top guys. Cavelli was the host last year to the Big Ten Championships and will be the host this year to the NCAA Finals. And you know, JR, based on what we experienced a year ago at Cavelli, it is going to be rocking as they get ready for Kazuki Hayashi, the senior out of Fairfax, Virginia, with a career high and season high of 14-4. Good mount, small hop on that landing. Full twisting double back there. Big slide back, probably three tenths. His teammate Chase Davenport Mills, he saw that 14-3, so that means they found a little over a point off. He's trying to give you a gauge of the types of deductions. Anything under a point off in deductions is virtually a perfect routine. That is how critical these judges can be. Oh, and that was a low front full in that combination pass, but managed to keep it on his feet. That was savvy. Well, his teammate blew away his previous career high with that 14-3. Another big triple twist. That was a beautiful triple twist. However, had that big hop slide out of it, which will be a deduction. A two and a half twist. There's the front full, and you can just see that front full was all below his shoulder height, which don't want that. Pretty impressive just to stay on his feet there and just opens up out of that triple twist. Got to absorb. Got to bend those knees as you contact the floor. Very springy floor. If you don't absorb, you're going to bounce out of it just like he did there. Sam Phillips featured in the open by John Roethlisberger. He's a senior from Woodland Hills, California. 14-1-5 season high. 14-4 career high. He's coming off a 13-7. His teammate right before him, Mondi, also with a new career high of a 14-6. That's a big, that is a big number 
And that's again, is out of a 15-4. I said anything less than a point's like perfect. That was eight tenths of a point. Oh, and that was a big mount. Two and a half twisting double back. We saw the double twisting double back. He added a half, but he did touch the white. On the side, actually the gray. Well done on that one. I told you in the open, I just love Sam's gymnastics. He's just, he's got a unique style. He's a taller gymnast. So when he does those big skills, they look even bigger coming from him. There. He's got a 15-5 start value on this event. I feel like he stepped out again right there. It was close, and that will be a tenth also. You don't want to do that on a simple turn in the corner. Arabian double. And that's a tough dismount. We saw some of the Arabian double front. <laughs> He's loving it. <laughs> Dean, you teach him that? Here we go, two and a half twist. Adds a half twist there. But that's probably a three-tenth hop, and that is a one-tenth deduction for one foot going out of bounds. And here's the Arabian double. So a blind landing means his feet hit the mat really before his eyes see the mat. And that is tough to do at the end of a routine. And def I love the slow-mo. I'm not sure what that dance <laughs> was called. Definitely not the gritty. The little girl I, loved it, too. I, think, I don't know if she loved it or if she was laughing at it. <laughs> uh, Vader smile is part of it as Cameron Nelson, another athlete that you featured in the Open, JR, as he's got a 14-8 season high and career high. And he is capable of a triple back mount. I don't think he's going to do it. I tell you what, I'd love to see it, but... It is the biggest skill done on floor exercise. Not going to do it. Just does a really simple double twisting double back. Like he was walking to class right there. Wow. Pike double front. Again, blind landing going in that forward direction, but stuck it perfectly. Another almost perfect landing. We were talking about Cameron. You know, they actually had a shot when we were watching warm-ups and he was lifting weights and he's gotten bigger, you know. Not not Donovan Hewitt bigger, but he's gotten bigger. Yeah, you know, it's an Olympic year, Dean, and, and he wants to be part of the team, that national team, and make it to the Olympic trials. And, and that's what happens. He's got the highest start value in this floor rotation so far. Beautiful raving double half out. Cameron's got to go to the NCAA Championships later this spring and finish in the top six in the all-around in order to qualify to the U.S. Championships. Then at the U.S. Championships, he's got to make the national team to qualify to the Olympic trials. So he's got some work to do. But I tell you what, do that a few times, Mr. Nelson, and you will be at the Olympic trials because that routine was absolutely world-class and not even the most difficult routine that he can do. He can do more. Look at this, triple twist. Feet a little cross, which technically you can deduct for that. Maybe a tiny foot slide if I'm really. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's trying to show us that he stuck that landing. His feet were just like cement boots into exactly. the floor. Exactly, he had to pull him out of there. The Buckeyes showing a little bit of flash and Sam Phillips on the other side also showing a little bit of flash. Speaking of flash, we already talked about what this young man accomplished last year as the gymnast of the year, Taylor Christopoulos. He is seventh in the nation on the floor, and this year has set his career high at 14.75. Cameron Nelson, really one of the stars, if not the star of the Buckeyes, and Taylor Kostopoulos is that guy for Nebraska. Can he match Cameron Nelson from Ohio State? Big mount you saw on that first pass, a double twisting, double layout. We've seen it in the tuck position numerous times. That one done in the layout, straight body position. There's the tucked. Double, double. John, Liang, new career high. Mondi, new career high. Phillips, new career high. 14.75. And now we'll see what Christopoulos can do. You know the difference, Dean, is we're covering them. 
<laughs> they know they got to step it up. On the Big Ten Network. This is fantastic. I can't reiterate enough. The gymnastics these guys are doing is the same gymnastics you will see in the Olympic Games in Paris. It is world-class gymnastics. Olympic teams for the United States come up out of college, generally for the United States. So it's big time stuff. Christopoulos, a senior from the state of Utah. Nice triple twist there at the end. I don't, in my opinion, think that will keep up with Cameron Nelson. Cameron did just an unbelievably clean routine. Christopoulos here had more hops and steps than he would certainly want to have. There's the tuck double-double. This fulfills a requirement on the floor for a non-acrobatic skill. Did he touch his feet? You don't want to touch your feet. In slow-mo, you could maybe see him brush a little bit there on the backside, but uh, it looked pretty clean. Three career highs for Nebraska, one for Ohio State. We've got one rotation in the books. The Cornhuskers looking to get a share of the regular season title. We go to rotation number two. It's the Pommel Horse when we return. Gymnastics on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Nebraska with a new season high on the floor. Their previous high score, John, was 70.8. They had a 71.2 here at the Cavelli Center. As the scores for the Buckeyes, they come up with a 70.150. Tell you what, great rotations for both of these teams. Can you find spots here and there where they could take deduction or they could gain more points back, rather? Certainly, but I don't think either one of those teams can ask for a whole lot more than what they just did there. Nathan York will be up first for Nebraska on the pommel horse, where Nebraska is fourth in the country, second in the Big Ten. Nathan York, a sophomore from Plainfield, Illinois. Career high, season high. He got in that last meet where they just were flying against Illinois, is 14-3-5. And this is an event for Nebraska that I, I feel like if you look on paper and you look at the high scores for these teams, they have a big advantage over Ohio State. Ohio State really needs to put together a good meet here. Keep it close after this rotation, and they'll give them themselves a shot to win it. This is not a bad routine. A few form breaks. I like to see the body stretched a little straighter. A little pike in the hips. A little form break there on the dismount. You can see the judges table, though, on the other side of the horse. His knees bent on this side of the horse. So technically, they probably did not see that knee bend at the very end of that routine. So pat on the back from Jim Hartung. Great look at the hands here. Such an intricate event. Considered the most difficult event in men's gymnastics. Look at the knees right there on the left side of the horse as he went up. But the judges on the other side, that might have saved him as much as three tenths if they did not see that. So we move to the Buckeyes, Christian Grahovski, the sophomore from New York, 14-4-5, career high and season high. Coming off a tough one, though, his last meet, he had a 13-3. The 13's not really a bad score on horse, though, Dean. It's a tough event to score big on. To get the 14s and the 15s on this event, really, really hard. You don't see very many of them. Oh, and you can see the circle slowing down. You got to keep the speed. The circle speed has got to stay steady. He starts to slow down right here. You can see his body just in slow motion as well. But it, trust me, it's slowing down. And once you get to the point where you just can't keep that momentum going, you do what he just did right there, and you fall off, unfortunately. A beautiful flare work. Look at that. Look at the toe point extension. This is fantastic once he got back up on the horse. And that is really unfortunate. Man, there were some fantastic gymnastics in that routine, but that fall one point off for that mistake. Plus, if he loses the value of the skill that he fell off on, 
and kind of hit you twice on the once on the difficulty side and once on the execution side. Christian Grahovsky will wait for his score as we move to Travis Wong. You see the 14-3 just under Nathan York's career high of 14-3-5. That 14-3 happens to be Travis Wong's season high, career high, and the exact score he had in that last meet against Illinois. That Nathan York score of 14-3, that's out of a 15-3, so only one point off. Sounds like a lot, but on Pommel Horse, so many places to take deductions. That is a really good execution for York. Nice swing to handstand back down into the middle of the horse. Tough to do. Beautiful. That's called a sewn or a 360 care on one Pommel. Super difficult to do. Anytime you camp out on one Pommel, for any period of time, it just raises the difficulty. Much harder to do a skill on the pommel than on the leather. Oh, that was unbelievable. That was absolutely fantastic routine. Starts at a 15.6. That is what he should start at. Here's the Sohn, invented by a Penn State gymnast, Mark Sohn. Be become a very common skill. That is exactly how you want to do a dismount. That's an area where Collegiate male gymnasts on this event tend to give up a lot of deductions on the handstand. You've got to keep it moving. That's exactly what he did. So Grahovsky with a 12.85 as we move to Tyler Rockwood, a senior from Lancaster, Ohio. 13.5 career high, 13.2 season high, 12.45 in his last meet. So the pressure is on now. We talked about five up, five count. And as a gymnast, that, that you break out into cold sweats when somebody says five up, five count, or three up, three count, whatever it might be, because you have to count everything. So Grahovsky's score of a 12-8-5, they have to count that. And now keep in mind, Nathan York from Nebraska started with a 14-3. That's a point and a half difference. There's no erasing that score for Ohio State. You gotta count it, so that means on this event right now, Nebraska with a point and a half lead after one routine. Ohio State cannot afford to have another mistake. Wong with a 14-2, just under his career high of a 14-3 as Rockwood on the horse for the Buckeyes. Little trouble there, you can see the knees bend. Gotta keep it moving. Wow, what a save, what a battle from Rockwood. He starts from a 14-7, so a lower start value, and he is gonna have a fair amount of execution deductions, but I'll tell you what, Casemiro Suarez right there and head coach Rustam Sharapov are going to be pleased with that performance. And coming up after a fall, we call that stopping the bleeding, Dean, and that's exactly what he did there with that hit routine. 14-2 for Wong following York's 14-3. This will lead to Chronopolis, who is a senior from Canada with a career high, season high, set in the last meet against Illinois. I mean, I feel like Nebraska is peaking at the right time. His number was a 14-4-5 in his last meet. Yeah, they had all 14s from the whole lineup last week. That is big. I told you a 13 is not a terrible score in Pomeroy. So you put up all 14s, you did something pretty special. Once again, a season high for Nebraska on the horse, a 71.5. With three gymnasts to go, including Yanni right here, they can get three hits. They are going to put themselves in a commanding lead over the home team Buckeyes. So far, very good routine. That was a great one as well. Look out, the Cornhuskers. This is an event where they can put up some numbers against the best in the country, and so far they're showing it. Look how intense Chuck is watching him. They're feeling it, John. Easy, making it look easy. I love that intense look from the coach. Yeah. I would hate to see that when I'm up on the event, though. <laughs> 
Chuck's such a good guy, though, as here comes Michael Wynn, the freshman from Fort Dodge, Iowa. 13.05. His high mark was set in his last meet, so he comes in with some confidence. Tyler Rockwood with a 13.45 for his routine. Last up for the Buckeyes. That's an improvement, but they've got to move these scores above a 14. Keep pace with the Cornhuskers. Very cool flare sequence. Flare spindle, they call that, when your upper body moves the opposite direction of your circle. Very hard to do. This is amazing work. Got to keep control. It takes a lot of energy to do these flares. Does he have anything left? He does! They absolutely needed that like they needed to breathe. Maybe saves their meat early here in the evening. And it's a great look at I can see his upper body rotating in the opposite direction right there. That's where the spindle comes from. But this is where you see a lot of guys run out of gas after a routine like that. Just barely got that up to the handstand position. That should absolutely be their first 14 of the day on this event. So now we go to Cooper Giles, the senior from Illinois, who is eighth in the nation on the horse, third in the Big Ten, 14-6-5 career in season high, coming off of 14-4. We talked about him in the open as well, about how this routine in particular can be a game changer if he can hit it. You can see the difference in his circle compared to most of the other guys in this rotation. Look at the stretch, the hips, almost perfectly straight. The space between his legs and the body of the horse a little bit bigger than some of the other gymnasts. That is all a sign of a great pommel horse worker. And that was another great one. Almost gave away a little on that handstand, but that's what he's talking about, Dean. That is what he's talking about. Well, and what you were talking about was straight on point. He is so much higher above the horse than the other athletes. And that is just a, a sign of a, a great pommel horseman. <laughs> Teammates are loving it. Coaches are loving it. Teammates are loving it. Hitting horse, Dean, in, in a pressure situation. Not a lot of things that are better than that. No, Hitting a buzzer beater and a three-pointer. That's, that's, that's pretty what it close, is, man. But, that's what it is. Well, we've been spoiled in the Big Ten over the last several years with horse superstars, including a couple from the Buckeyes. Penn State comes to mind with Netta Rossick. Illinois has had some big-time horsemen, for lack of a better word. Yep. <laughs> Parker Thaxton, the sophomore from New Jersey, 14-7-5 career and season high, 14-7 in his last meet. He has been consistent for Roostown. And again, like Giles from Nebraska, look at the extension, and he just did a 360 Stockley, which is the opposite way as a sewn that we saw earlier, the 360 carry. Did those back-to-back, -back, super hard way to start his routine. Look at the stretch, like Giles. Body very open. His legs might even be higher off the horse. Can he hang in there? Doing a lot of gymnastics in this routine. Does he have the strength to get the dismount up cleanly? Oh, that was, I think, in my opinion, the best routine done tonight. And we've seen some great routines. Chronopolis with that 14.55, that might be in trouble here. This was fantastic. Here's a look at the start, and you can see the stretch in the circle. There's the dismount. Just as smooth as you can do it. As smooth as Casimiro Suarez's top of his head right there. That's how smooth that dismount was. <laughs> we'll wait for his score. Ohio State was in trouble, in my opinion. And they really gathered themselves after that opening mistake from Grahofsky. Rockwood put up a decent mid-13. Wen put up a 14-2, man, they needed that. 
And that last routine, that's going to be the biggest one of the night for them. Taylor Christopoulos will be the anchor, the senior from Utah. No relation to Yanni Kronopoulos, who, by the way, set a new career high. Nebraska out of the gate with four career highs, and we're not even through two rotations. They want that share of the regular season title as Pat is their head coach wants it. Meanwhile, Parker Thaxon with a 15-2. Unbelievable. Wow, did they need that big score. Taylor struggling a little bit, but not bad. Beautiful dismount, however. The Cornhuskers can swing some pommel horse. Fourth in the country, second in the Big Ten. Good look at the hands. I'll tell you what, you know, you're in Lincoln in the winter. Why not just stay inside and do pommel horse a little extra? No yeah. reason to go outside. It's interesting because both Chuck and Rustam were talking about the 4 o'clock start, you know, how it's a little bit different. They weren't quite sure what that was going to mean. I, I think it's suiting both teams, quite frankly, the way they've started. You're absolutely right. It it's, has been a fantastic competition. Very few major errors. Jesse Piccoli, the sophomore from Hawaii, 13.95 career high, season high, coming off a 12.85 in his last meet. Big moment here for the Buckeyes. They do have that fall early. But they put up some big scores. They need to finish with a big one here. Small form break there in the middle of the routine. Watch the feet. Do they stay together? The knee's getting a little soft. But another hit. The pressure was on. Four routines in a row for the Buckeyes. They absolutely had to hit them. Keep this meet close, and they did. What a finish for the Buckeyes. Pakali right after Thaxton, and here's Pakali's dismount. I told you how the dismounts were such a big part, a critical part of Pommel Horse, and every one of these guys just flew up there, no problem. Career highs dropping all over the place as Nebraska actually searching for a share. They'll be on the rings with the Buckeyes when we return. Big Ten Plus delivers thousands of non-televised live events, access to next day on-demand replays, multi-view to watch up to four games at once, and a 24-7 channel for your favorite school. There's no plus like home. Subscribe and stream for as low as $9.95 a month at Big10plus.com. Take a look at the scores. They have been outstanding. Nebraska and Ohio State athletes setting career highs. Yeah, Nebraska, you know, you knew Ohio State, especially after that first fall, wasn't going to be able to keep pace with the Cornhuskers if they hit, but they did enough to at least keep it close. You know, a couple point difference on that event, and certainly Nebraska with a, a decent lead. 3.7 is the lead so far, but getting through Pommel Horse, an event that's been a challenge for the Buckeyes, and getting onto some events where they are stronger to give themselves a chance. Chuck told us rings, their weakest event. He admitted, hey, we've struggled a little bit on rings. Could this be a chance? You love Donovan Hewitt. You love the Buckeye, and could he and his team put up a number to close that gap? What they don't want to do is let that lead get stretched out. 3.7, again, a fall is a point. A couple of falls, and you are right back in this. A couple of routines where you can just flat out beat the other guy, and this meet is tight again. So a long way to go. As Arthur Ashley gets ready, it's worth telling you that Nebraska with a new season high on the Pommel, 71.7, their previous was 71.5. Ashton, career high, season high, is a 13.55 for the junior out of Mason, Ohio. Ashton comes out of Queen City Gymnastics. Keith Pettit, his coach, done an outstanding job for years there. Ohio 
Ohio State with national championships in 2001, 96, and 85. The clean routine. Doesn't have some of the, the big strength skills that we will see later in this rotation, but if you're gonna do a simpler routine, do what he's doing right here and hit it clean. The biggest deduction, probably that big step back on that double pike front dismount. Those are called Yamawaki's double fronts in between the rings. It does one in the tuck position, one in the pike position. There's a double pike front again, blind landing, just a little under rotated, three tenths step there at the end. But a good start for the Buckeyes. James Friedman, a senior from Salem, Oregon. Career high, season high, 13-8. Looking through this Nebraska rings lineup, and they've got three former Junior Olympic National Champions on this event alone. See how that translates into the collegiate competition. Again, they're trying to hold that lead over the Buckeyes, get their first share of their first regular season title in the Big Ten. Just give you an idea of how good Nebraska is. Ch you're right, Chuck Chimelka said they're not as good in the rings. However, they're fifth in the nation. Ohio State's seventh in the nation. So even on rings, Nebraska ahead of Ohio State. A nice straight body press to the hand. Sam Friedman, one of those junior Olympic national champions on this event. And this routine, again, like Ashton from Ohio State in the leadoff spot. Just really clean. Doesn't have a huge start value. Scheduled to start at a 14-9. But he hit it so, oh, and again, like Ashton, the biggest deduction coming on that dismount. Double twist and double back. Interesting to point out, he didn't finish the twist, and he took that big step and his shoulders were low. It's like a triple whammy. Look at it right here. Two twists, two flips. We saw that skill on floor. See how he's short? His feet are a little diagonal when he lands. His shoulders are low, and he takes that three-tenth step. To give you an idea, that could be a six to eight-tenth deduction on that landing alone, and he didn't fall. That is how unforgiving the rules are oh in men's gymnastics. Arthur Ashton with the 13-2-5 makes way for Tyler Rockwood, a 14-1 career and season high. He's coming off a 13-4-5. He's a senior from Lancaster, Ohio. Here's our first look at the Maltese position. Very highly valued skill on the still rings. Iron cross pull out to an LC. Well done. Need to hold those strength moves two seconds. A full two seconds, not one of these one two. It's got to be a, a full one Mississippi, two Mississippi game. Got it. Picking up a little swing there. They're called the still rings for a reason. You do not want that swing. Handles it though. Double twisting, double back again. And unfortunately, huge step forward. That swinging should be. A deduction as well, probably a tenth, could be as high as three. There's the Maltese. Shoulders gotta be right flat with the hands. Unfortunately, a huge step forward, shoulders very low. Right before the dismount, the rings were swinging a little bit. Does that make a difference as far as what's gonna happen on the landing? If you time your, your, your drop, at the right time. So if you're in a handstand as the ring swings forward, if you drop then, it shouldn't be a problem. In fact, if you can time it just perfectly, you can get a little extra pop off those rings. So I don't think that affected his dismount there. It shouldn't have. Travis Wong, the junior from Miami, career high, season high, 13-6. Together plunge position that is called. Definitely held that for two seconds. Really well done. Yamawaki's, those 
double fronts become very popular. Our producer loves those. <laughs> He's a wrestler. Loves the Amawakis. He's very happy to see them. Full twisting double layout. Sticks the landing. Give it to him. Right, he held it. They need to keep that up. Here, watch this. Supposed to be fully laid out. You be the judge at home. Does his body pike? Laid out there. What about right there? That is absolutely piked at the end, which I think he will get credit for the full twisting double layout, but will sustain a deduction for piking at the end. Nonetheless, very well done throughout that routine otherwise. What about lifting that left heel right at the end as we get ready for Jesse McKelly? What, are you now, you're a judge now? <laughs> you, you see, you've got that critical eye. You've got that critical eye just like they do. It could be. I would not personally. I think it, it was stable enough, but you go up on your toes, you wave your arms, you, you open yourself up for deduction. Tyler Rockwood score 13-7-5. Down from 13-8-5, so an adjustment. A little bit high, that should be a Maltese. Those, those shoulders should be flat with his hand. Oh, and that was a big break right there. That was supposed to be a Yamawaki. Came up so short that he went back the other direction. I honestly don't know if I've ever seen that happen before. a way to get through the routine. I think he's a little surprised too. You can see him explaining it to his coach, Suarez. So watch, we've seen these Yamawakis many times. It's supposed to continue over, but his hands got out in front of him. He should push his rings out to the side just a little bit, and he would have made that completely over. I, will, I would be surprised if he's ever had that mistake in his life prior to that moment. I don't think it was a grip issue or how his hands were on the grips. I think he just put his hands in the wrong position coming over the top there. Maybe he thought he was a little more rotated, a little higher than he was. So that's a new career high for Travis Wong at 13.85 as Asher Cohen gets ready. He's got a career high, season high set this season. The sophomore from Lakewood, Colorado has put up a 14.05. Add Wong to the list of career highs set already, and we're not even halfway through. Rustam talking it over with Bakali. Yeah, trying to decipher what exactly took place on that skill. So Bakali with an 11 6. And that's devastating right now, I'll be honest with the Buckeyes. They needed to get this meet closer, not further apart. Five up, five count, and Nebraska came into the Big Ten in 2011. They did move Jesse up to 11-7, but they need points, not tens at this point. Perfect handstand position there. A one and a half twisting double back. We've seen the double twisting double back off rings. A one and a half, also difficult, that blind landing, but he does it well. This was a good routine. You can see how his thumbs and his wrists are kind of bent right there. We call that a false grip. And believe it or not, that is also a deduction on the rings. You cannot bend your wrists, they need to be straight. You will get hit on that for sure. And then that small hop on the landing, maybe a tenth 
at the end. Starts from a 15-2. Should be close to a 14. Maybe just under, we'll see. Cam Nelson, who's already set a career high on the floor of a 14-8, is fourth to go. His career high on the rings for the senior from Jackson, Tennessee, is 14-2. The Buckeyes have career highs from Nelson, Davenport Mills on the floor, and then on the horse, Thaxon with that 15-2, along with Wynn and Rockwood, all career highs. So it's not just been Nebraska with career highs today. They've got a lot, including Nelson. And Cameron Nelson right here, and Donovan Hewitt in the anchor position need gigantic scores for the Buckeyes. We saw the inverted cross there, the upside down cross, if you will. And swings backwards to a, or a plunge with his legs together, rather. Legs together plunge there. Got to stick the landing. This is a very good routine. Could be a big number. Got to finish clean, though. Double, double. Oh, and he answers. They absolutely needed that. We saw him on floor stick almost every pass. And this is a great look. That is the legs together plunge position. Done really well. If you're nitpicking, maybe a tenth high, but this right here, no better feeling than just nailing the landing. He is a great showman. Makes it look easy. And the Buckeyes needed that big time. Nebraska was continuing to pull away here on this event. So fourth to go for Chuck Chimelka and the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Chris Heiser, the junior from Long Meadow, Mass. 14-2 season high set in the meet against Illinois. He has had a 14-3 career high. 2022 Big Ten Freshman of the Year, also a Junior Olympic National Champion on this event. Nelson with a 13-7. I thought they hit him pretty hard. I know some of his strength moves maybe a little high in that inverted cross, but I thought he'd go a little higher. I thought he'd be in just into the 14s possibly, but no such luck. Heiser's teammate Wong with a new career high of 13.85. That makes 11 career highs today in Columbus. I mean, they are not messing around. A little side to side swing there. Should be a problem if he could steady himself a little bit in his handstand. Probably a tenth or two from the judges. Double double. Handles it. A little subdued, Chuck Schmelka. Don't want to get too excited too soon. There's a good look at that swing. You want to keep the elbows free of the straps. He had a little elbow bend, a little pike in the handstand, and a little swing. All of those things, potential deductions. Good look there. And Zion Milwaukee's back up by Stradwell. So here he is, Donovan Hewitt, who, according to Rustam Sharapov, not only an incredible gymnast, and obviously fantastic on the rings, where he's fifth in the nation, third in the Big Ten, but a tremendous student athlete involved in multiple activities on campus. In graduate school to get his law degree as well. Why not throw that on there? The moment Dean Linky has been waiting for. One of the best in the country right here. Back up rise, legs together, plunge. Look at this, lowers to the Maltese. You can see the different position. What makes a planche? What makes a Maltese? The Maltese being the flat position. There's another one, back up rise into that one. Pretty well done. Maybe a hair short on that hold, but. 
14-6 is his career high. Nailed the strength moves. Now he's got to nail the swing skills as well. Not always the easiest thing for the really strong ringmen. Sometimes those easier swing skills, in particular the ones to the handstand position, sometimes come up and bite him. But this is going to be a big score if he can land clean. That should be the biggest number on rings so far. That step on the landing, probably three tenths. They'll find some deductions in here, but nothing should be too big. Very nicely done there. There's the back up rise to the Maltese position. See how his shoulders to his arms, if you put a level on that, the bubble should be right in the middle. This Big team is step. loving it. You're right, biceps on biceps. His triceps aren't too tiny either. Donovan Hewitt. Sam Phillips will be the anchor for the Cornhuskers. Career high, season high, 13-8. As you see, Heiser in there with the 13-5. 14-0-5 for Donovan Hewitt, just under his Season high of a 14-2. Here comes Sam Phillips. So Sam not going to show you that strength that you saw from Donovan Hewitt. He's got a nice look. See how he opens his hands right there. That's demonstrating to the judges that he doesn't have that false grip that we talked about earlier, that bend in the wrist. Beautiful sequence there, as well as you can do it give you a difference in these routines. Donovan Hewitt starts from a 15.4. Sam Phillips starts from a 14.6. At least that's their schedule to do. And the biggest difference is those strength moves that the gymnasts do. Those are so important on rings. Wow, what a dismount, though. When it comes to flipping and flying through the air, few do it better than Sam Phillips. Look at this. Opens almost to the laid out position right there. Spots the landing. A little dip of the shoulders, but that was pretty sweet. Nebraska looking to get a share of the Big Ten regular season title. Donovan Hewitt strong, long strong. The vault when we return. April 5th, the 2024 Big Ten Men's Gymnastics Championships get underway with the team and all-around competitions. Live coverage begins at 8 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Take a look at the results from the third rotation. Reminding you that Nebraska can clinch a share of the regular season title if they can beat the Buckeyes and once again they beat him in the rings. Yeah, and that's exactly what they uh, did not want to do. They needed to close the gap, but in turn, Nebraska, they stretched it out over almost six points now separates the two teams. Highlight for that rotation, though, that Donovan Hewitt, 14 5 fantastic routine there. But again, even though Buckeyes well behind, we're seeing great gymnastics here, kind of seeing that postseason form that coaches like to see. 11 career highs, and now we go to the vault where both these teams are amazing. Nebraska, first in the Big Ten, second in the country, John, and Ohio State, fourth in the nation, third in the Big Ten. So both teams really, really solid. As you see the Ohio State tennis team, Coach Schaub and the Buckeyes, always really good. Let's go support your fellow Buckeyes. I love to see it. Yes, a couple of good teams coming to vault for sure. Gymnastics on the Big Ten Network is brought to you by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Nebraska three rotations away from clinching a regular season title with Illinois. Back with more on the Big Ten Network from Columbus, Ohio.
in Columbus at the Cavelli, where the Nebraska Cornhuskers have a commanding lead halfway through. 211.65 for the number five team in the country. And Nebraska, if they win after beating Illinois in their last meet, will share the regular season title with the Illini. And it'll be the first time ever for Nebraska since entering the Big Ten in 2011 where they've won any kind of trophy or shared any kind of title in men's gymnastics. Hard to believe when they get to the NCAAs and rock and roll and they come so close to the Big Ten championships. But I think they're going to do it today. I think the hats and T-shirts, unless it's a total collapse, they look to be in pretty good shape. Yeah, halfway through, they have uh, taken control of this competition. But again, you can't breathe easy until the last gymnast lands. Again, uh, falls a point, things can change quickly. Quick recap on the rings, led by Donovan Hewitt's 14.05. Cameron Nelson also pretty solid with 13.7. Sam Phillips, well done. Asher Cohen also with a 13.95, the highest score for the Cornhuskers on the rings. And that's what Nebraska wants to do on the rings. You didn't see any scores in the 14s, but they were all high 13s. Solid, consistent. They know Chuck, head coach Chuck Schmelka knows. He admitted it to us that that's not their best event. So what do you do when you don't have a lot of difficulty on event? You hit clean. You maximize that execution side of the score, and that's exactly what Nebraska did. They played their playbook perfectly, and they even got a little bit more of a lead on the Buckeyes halfway through. So here's Chase Mondi, who already has one of the 11 new career highs set through the first three rotations, and we'll keep adding to them. We're at 11 right now, career highs between the two teams. Mondi, his career high on the ball is a 14.85. He's coming off a 14.4, the freshman from Lawrence, Kansas. This is going to be fun. This is going to be a stick contest. We're going to see some big vaults, and it's going to come down to who is going to stick the landings better. I guarantee we will see. We're going to see a stick or two. got one right out of the gate. Every gymnast from Nebraska is going to do that two and a half twist. That one was called the Kazamatsu, also referred to as a Sukahara, kind of the cart cartwheel over the vault table. And off that vault table, they do a flip with two and a half twists, landing forward. Again, a difficult landing going forward, blind landing, again, meaning your feet hit before your eyes really see that mat. That one done well. A little four break in the air. That'll be a deduction plus that probably three tenth hop at the end. Chase Davenport Mills, the freshman, 14-5 career high. Earlier he set a career high on the floor with a 14-3. So, so he's going to do a little bit different style vault. It's called the Yurchenko. So before from that last vaulter, Chase uh, Chris Chase Mondi rather, he did the cartwheel over the vault table. So right here. We're going to see a round off in front of the vault board. Aldo Yurchenko, and he's actually going to back handspring up onto the vault table. Watch it right there. Very difficult. Two twists at the end of that vault. Done very cleanly. Actually worth less, though, than the vault we saw from Chase Mondi. This is worth a 14.8. Goes right out of your screen. That's how high you went. Chase Mondi's vault was worth a 15.2. So that'll set the table for Luke James, the sophomore from South Africa with a 14-5 career in season high as Chase Davenport Mills adding a little dance. Here comes Luke James, 14-5 career high. Same vault we saw from Chase Mundy. 14-3-5 out of a 15-2. Basically, who can do it cleaner? And that one was cleaner. That left foot, though. Small movement of the foot. That was a one-tenth movement. And those lines, you can be on the line. It's tennis. But you can't go over the line. And he went over the line. Now, 
I am not, the one thing I'm not sure is the line judge at that head table we saw, or is usually the line judge is in line with the vault, in which case they will definitely see that one tenth deduction. If it was on the side, which they normally are not, they probably did not see that one tenth deduction. Great point. Kazuki Hayashi, a senior from Fairfax, Virginia, 14 6 career high, 14 5 5 season high, 14 3 5 in his last meet. It's going to be the same vault we saw from both of the Cornhusker gymnasts so far, the two and a half twist. Again, done really well. Probably a three tenth hop on that little form on the vault table. When his hands were on the vault table, his feet gave a little bit away. Let's see if you can tell here. See right there in the pre flight, three tenths for sure. Slight foot form in the air as well. We're going to see consistent scoring here. That's probably going to be a low 14. Luke James with a new career high. That's 12 if you're keeping score at home. 12 career highs between these two teams as Suzuki Hayashi now go back over to Sam Phillips. 14-7 career high, 14-3 season high, 14-2 in his last meet. Yeah, 14-7-5 from Luke James. So they saw a very clean vault just like we did. Does not look like they took that 10th for going over the line. Hayashi with a 14-4. Same vault again here. But Sam Phillips, he just makes it look bigger. He's a tall gymnast. If he can execute this well, he will score higher. This thing flies. Look at the distance. Unfortunately, short on that rotation. But look how far he goes just travels completely out of the picture. But does have some form there, a little bit in the air as well, and that is gonna be significant. Huge step out of bounds. If both feet go over the line, that's three tenths, so I'm not sure where that second foot ended up. But that will be probably the lowest score we've had today on vault. Zach Snyder. Freshman from Swisher, Iowa, 15 is his career high. So he is capable of a huge vault here. It's the same vault we've seen, but with another half twist. So technically three twists. We'll see if he does it. Does it! That is the most difficult vault being done in today's competition. Starts from a 15-6. You can see the reaction from his teammates. That is the type of gymnastics that separates you from the field. This could be a Big Ten championship fault right here. See, extra twist right there. Little short, maybe, if you want to be picky. But that is world-class gymnastics. Team USA this summer in Paris would love to have a vault like that in their lineup. That's big time. Big time indeed, as we move back over to Zach Tiederman, the senior from Wilsonville, Oregon. He's also at a 15, coming off a 14-3. He is also going to do the Yurchenko-style vault. But this time, he's going to do it with a two-and-a-half twist. Almost sticks the landing, just a hair shy, but really clean. That's what I like about the Yurchenko style as, as opposed to the Kazamatsu or the cartwheel onto the table. Yurchenko style vaults coming onto the vault table tend to be cleaner. The feet stay together easier, toes pointed, fewer spots for deductions. However, a little bit more intricate vault as well. Cameron Nelson, the senior from Jackson, Tennessee, having a big time day and he's had a few before. Yeah, he can do some vaults. And he's capable of doing that vault with another half twist. So a two and a half twist, that was a front double twist. 2022 Big Ten champion. 15.05 career high. I believe he is gonna do the double pull here. He does it. Oh man, he wanted to stick that. 
Just put his feet out in front of him a little bit too far. Saw that Zach Schneider score of 14.75, so he ties the high score of the day, actually. You can see him just open up, pulls his arm open just a little bit too soon. Needed to drive those heels, keep the arms in just a hair longer. This flashback for Taylor Christopoulos, who won last year. Wow. These guys are, they're, they're making me out to be a liar today, Dean, though. I said we'd see a couple stuck landings. We haven't seen them yet. I'm running out of chances. 14.95 career high for Taylor Christopoulos. Last to go for Chuck Chimelka. You can see him kind of rehearsing that vault in his head there before he took off. Well done, big hop forward at the end. Maybe a little foot form on the vault table. Rinse and repeat though for these vaults. This is a great vault rotation. With a lot of similar vaults, it's just again, who does this part better, right? There. Three ten pop for sure. Probably going to be another low to mid 14 score on that one. Caden, excuse me, Justin Sicone is the anchor, the sophomore from Rochester, New York. 14 9 5, career high, season high, coming off a 14 2. And Rustam Sharapov told us before this competition, he said he has stuck five of his last six of these in competition. This is an incredibly hard vault to stick. It's a handspring double front. Watch this, a lot going on, and he does it again! Wow! Make it six of seven. It was five of six going into that. It's not possible, Dean, to do that. <laughs> I've seen the best in the world not be able to do that. If, if you're lucky, you're going to stick one out of, you know, six or seven. He does squat kind of low, but nailed it. Everybody in the truck saying very cool. P-Bars, when we return to the Big Ten Network. April 6th, the conference's best put it all on the line during the individual event finals at the 2024 Big Ten Men's Gymnastics Championships at Illinois. Live coverage begins 8 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Take a look at the vault results. Taylor Christopoulos with a 14-5 Sacone with a 14-7, so not quite a career high, but what an unbelievable display. It was, you know, they found some other deductions for him in the air, squatting deep on that landing, but I mean, Rustam, he told us, he told us it was gonna happen. I didn't really believe him. I go, it's gotta be luck. But after that many stuck landings, it's no longer luck. That's incredible. Speaking of incredible, today, through four rotations, we are now up to 12 career highs. JR, I've been with you a long time. I don't remember that many career highs in one meet. I just don't. No, well, especially late in the season. Granted, you want your best gymnastics late in the season, but usually you've got these moments throughout the season that make it tough to do that. At least this many times in one meet, certainly. So Rustam, right after Justin Sicone finished, was already in the judge's face and you wonder <laughs> if he's still thinking about that score as it wasn't quite at 14.95. We now move to the P-Bars where Ohio State is eighth in the nation, Nebraska is seventh, and the Buckeyes lead off with Jacob Murray, a redshirt senior with a career high of 14. Yeah, the, the Buckeyes are gonna need some help from Nebraska, and when I say help, they need Nebraska to make mistakes, something they have not done today. They have been incredibly consistent and have not given the Buckeyes even a little bit of room. On the other side of the floor, though, Ohio State has had a couple of mistakes, and they're costly. It cost them to be a much closer meet. Had they not had those, those errors, but for Ohio State, just they've got 10 routines left. You've got to just hit as clean as you can. This routine right here, fantastic. That's all you can do. That's all you can do, go up and perform. 
You can't, you can't play defense in gymnastics, so they have no control over Nebraska. They have control over what you do right here. That done well. Back up rise to a front toss, they call that. Look at this, double front. Coach Suarez right there, giving him some help. Good start, something to build on. Nine left to go for Ohio State. Ten routines left to go for Nebraska. For Ohio State, just put some pressure on each of these guys. You're going before them, hit a big routine, make them know that they have to hit, and maybe you'll catch a break. Three seniors in the P-Bars lineup for Nebraska, including their leadoff man, James Friedman, with a career-high, season-high, 13-7. Coach Schmucka did tell us this is an event they have really jockeyed around the lineups a lot this season. He said almost every meet has been a different lineup. That is not easy for a gymnast. You like to get comfortable in a certain position in the lineup. You get a rhythm, you get a routine, you know that you know the timing before you have to be ready to go. So that can be challenging. We'll see how it affects the Cornhuskers here. And after one routine, Friedman, no problem. Very business-like routine right there. There's a double pike dismount. You know, you like to see the toes pointing. Maybe the leg's a little straighter in the air on that. Yeah, this is the Nebraska, first time. Nope, this is the first time this season where in back-to-back -back meets, Nebraska does have the same lineup as Chuck Chimelka, hoping they can cruise into the Big Ten Championships with this lineup. Christian Grahovski, the sophomore from the state of New York with a 13-3. There's Chuck, 15 seasons as the top man. It's part of a winning national championships with Nebraska as a gymnast. Sitting next to Jim Hartung there to his right in the background. Jim, the 84 Olympic gold medalist, was also a member of the 80 team that did not get to compete in Moscow. But 22 All-Americans, Jim Hartung, arguably the greatest collegiate gymnast of all time. The most All-Americans, won the All-Around twice, and has really set the bar for the rest of us. Grohovsky. Up trouble on Pommel Horse. In rotation number two, but got to put that behind him now. And you know what? I feel like he did. When he got back up on that horse, I thought he looked brilliant. And that skill he just did from one end of the bars to the other, the bobs are, he just floated. Incredible skill. And I love his look on Pommel Horse as well, even with those troubles. Harold of ours too, just great lines. Nice toe point. Extensions, and you're right, he's got it all. His look is solid. Beautiful double pike. Small step on the landing. Two for two for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Here's the Bobsar, named after a Buckeye, Raj Bobsar. Seeing a lot of international gyms, and collegiate gymnasts doing that skill nowadays, worth a lot of points. He does it. Just about as good as anybody I've seen. His teammates loving that double pike, loving that routine as a whole. Cole Ohio State, strong start here. Yep, solid by Murray and Grahovsky. Well said, JR. Cole Partridge, the senior from Burbank, California, 14 2 career high set this season. He's coming off a 13 4 5. So let's talk about this. We said Ohio State needs to put pressure on Nebraska. So the first routines, if you compare them, advantage Ohio State by six and a half tenths. That's pretty big in one routine. Now what are they gonna do here? Can Nebraska keep pace with that outstanding routine we just saw from Grahovsky? Or can the Buckeyes chew into that lead a little bit more? Bob's are also well done. This is a 
clean routine, not really giving anything away. No big breaks, maybe a tenth here or there. Biggest break that dismount, big hop, small hop, probably four tenths at least on that landing alone from Partridge, but other than that, really worked hard up there. In gymnastics, if you gotta take a hop or a step, take one. You wanna just, you don't wanna add steps or hops together. Don't forget, April 5th, the 2024 Big Ten Men's Gymnastics Championships get underway with the team in all-around competitions. Live coverage begins at 8 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. We're up to 13 career highs as Jacob Murray led off the Buckeyes, who, by the way, are eighth in the country on the P-bars. And Jacob Murray with a new career high of 14.25. Previously was 14, so that's now 13. That's right, one, three career highs set here. And we're not even halfway through the fifth rotation as we get ready for Jacob Harmon with a 13-9-3-3 career high. Walk on. Oh, and big break right there. Can't afford that. As the backup rise front toss couldn't make the swing, the handstand came back the other direction has gotten himself together here. And this just as the Buckeyes had two routines in and both of those routines managed to eat into that Cornhusker lead, but this one unfortunately not gonna help them. Finished really well. It's tough in gymnastics. You make a mistake on your first skill of a routine. Let's see if it was his hand. You can see his, hand, his fingers are crossed over the bar on the left side there. That's not supposed to be that way. Yeah, he knows. Trying to finesse it over. Teaching moment for Rustam. Great shot of his reaction. Staying in the moment. Staying positive. And talking to Rustam on the phone, you know, yesterday, it really, that's the impression I got from him. He wants his gymnast to go out and not worry about winning and losing the meet. Go out and perform. Don't go out and do routines and just try not to fall. Don't just try to stay on the equipment. You've got to go out and let it swing and let it go and do your best, go for your best gymnastics. And I really do think they have done that today. Obviously, they've had some mistakes, but he even said, if you have a mistake, you have a mistake. But go out there and try to swing big. Asher Cohen, a sophomore from Lakewood, Colorado. A 14-1 career high. By the way, speaking of 14, we now are at 14 because Christian Grahovski also set a new career high with a 13-9-5 for Ohio State. That one just barely got his feet over the bars behind him. You have to see a little more air between your body and the bars on that skill. Oh, oh like a dart. Chuck has got the game face on today. The entire, Just yeah. serious. This is similar to the Bob Sarr, but that's a to pelt. So just goes to that kind of straddled L position and pushes up to a handstand. A little low there, but this, feet together, they do not move. where Nebraska is going to get some of those points back that they gave away in the first two routines. Jacob Harmon just a 13-1 for his routine. So that last one from Cohen certainly going to be higher than that. Kazuki Hayashi will slide in here. Originally, we thought it would be Tyler Rockwood, but Rustam Sharapov making a change. Hayashi 
with a 13.85 career high, 13.75 season high. You saw the scores of Murray and Grahovsky, both career highs as we are up to 14. And that's why we, while we wait for the score of Asher Cohen to see if it's 15. They need a big one here. One in the quarter right there. Well done. Can be a punishing skill if you can't get your hands on the bar early. This might have been a good move. For Coach Sherapov to put in Hayashi. He is doing a great routine. Can he finish strong? He does. Gotta be pleased with that. Dare I say another career high. Can we get a 15? Can we? Piked feet. But does not move. Rustam Sharapov stuck that same dismount in the Georgia Dome in 1996 to win Sam Phillips gets ready. Want to remind you that on April 6th, the conference's best put it all on the line during the individual event finals at the 2024 Big Ten Men's Gymnastics Championships. Live coverage begins at 8 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network and the Fox Sports app. Sam Phillips fourth to goal for Chuck Chimelka, the senior from Woodland Hills, California. 14-4 career high, season high set this year. See Asher Cohen in with a 13-1. I thought that would be higher. I, I said he would get some of that, that point, those points back that they gave away in the first routines. It was the same score as Jacob Harmon. So good sign for the Buckeyes. Not so much for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, but that lead's still very comfortable. Beautiful there. Back up rise to a front toss. Swings to handstand. So Hayashi with a 14 2. So that, now there's 15 career highs, Jim. Wow, and that is a big score. Sam Phillips is going to. Oh! And what a save on that Stutz to a handstand. Almost goes over. And that was a great look at that front. One and a quarter, you can see how his arms smash into those rails. Unpleasant at best. And okay, that was not what Sam Phillips wanted. A lot of areas for deductions, this one in particular. Stutz to handstand, legs go over, almost loses it completely. And even though he had a break on that, that was a huge save. You fall off, you get the deduction for the form, the steps of your hand, and falling off the apparatus. And that's the type of thing that can make this meet really tight, really quick. So he salvaged that, but a little bit of a crack in the door here for the Buckeyes, just a tiny bit. Well, you feel like Rustam opened that door, or to use your word, the crack in the door by sliding Hayashi in in that fourth spot, he comes up with a career high. That was big. I'm yeah. not going to lie, that was big. I'm not sure if that was gamesmanship or there was something else with maybe injury on the side, whatever it was. We give credit to credit to Coach Sharp, Sharapoff for that one, putting in Hayashi game planning correctly. But uh, that worked out real, real well as Caden Spencer gets ready to go. 14-2 for Hayashi, the 15th career high today. Caden Spencer, sophomore from Huntington, West Virginia, will be in the anchor spot for the Buckeyes. Fifth rotation, P-bars. And he's a top 20 gymnast in the country right now on this event. And if there was ever a time 
in 2024 so far for him to hit a big routine. It is right now. The Buckeyes trying to make a move on the Cornhuskers, but they need one here. They need one every time up on the apparatus here on out. Spencer with a 14-2-5 career high, season high. Oh, and just really unfortunate. Doing a support swing to his elbow. You can see his left elbow. I've done it. Every gymnast has. You're coming down from the handstand. A tremendous amount of G-forces on your arms. And if they are not locked out, you can see what happened on his left elbow there. Your arm buckles and you just got no shot. You cannot save that. And that is unfortunate. That is the skill he was planning on doing. So one point off for that fall. Man, that is just tough for the Buckeyes. They had a shot, they were making a move. They picked up points on all but one of their routines so far. And then that Sam Phillips 11-9 opened the door big time. Got that lead to less than two points going into that parallel bar routine by Caden Spencer. A hit from Taylor Christopoulos right here is just gonna extend that lead back above two points. But he's got a hit. He's great. But even the great one's gotta perform. 15th season for Chuck Chimelka. You mentioned all those national championships he won with Nebraska as a gymnast there, along with Jim Hartung. He has never won a regular season title or a Big Ten championships, and they are that close to sharing the regular season with Illinois as we go to the anchor of the fifth rotation, the P-Bars for Nebraska, the one and only Taylor Christopoulos, who has a 14-1-5 Career high, season high, he's coming off a 13-9. And I don't want to say a big hit routine here is going to clinch this meet for Nebraska because we're going to high bar next. And anybody at any time can come off high bar, but it is going to give them a really comfortable lead. It could definitely be back to four points or more. And so far, this is fantastic for Christopher. Well, and speaking of fantastic, Nebraska, stay with us, folks. They're fantastic on the high bar. Third in the nation. And the veteran is going to come back for a fifth year, and that's got to make Coach Chuck Schmelk a smile, even though he hasn't smiled once today. <laughs> I mean, all the season high, career highs, whatever, and we can't even get a smile from head coach. If you've been watching and paying attention, what do you think, people at home? Were his shoulders a little low on that landing? Do you take a tenth? Nebraska, so close to sharing the regular season title. They head to the high bar where they're third in the nation. The Buckeyes are seventh. Nebraska leading. July 13th, the BTN Big Ten K returns to Soldier Field in Chicago for the fantastic 10K and 5K races and tailgate party. Scan the QR code or register right now at btnbig10k.com. Buckeyes making a little bit of a push and then right at the end there, the anchor with a little bit of a slip up, but still got a 13.05. So Ohio State won the P-Bars, JR, 68.55 to Nebraska's 65.7. And you give Spencer a redo, and oh. it is really tight. I tell you what, you know, you can't give redo. Sam Phillips would like a redo also, but, you know, if he stays on, that is, that's a point. And this meet is real interesting at that point. Now it's just a little over two points. I was surprised with that Taylor Kostopoulos score, though, only a 13-3-5. I thought it would be higher than that. But that being said, 2.25 going into the high bar. Certainly gives you some margin for error, but I've competed high bar. You gotta let go and you gotta catch. 
And no matter how good you've been, no, how, no matter how good you are, things can go sideways quickly. So if Ohio State can hit routines, again, put a little pressure on the Cornhuskers, you just never know. Nebraska on the other side, just got to hit. Hold on to that bar. This is Max Odden, 13-8-5-0. Big release right there, easy. And here's the thing about releases, you want to keep your arms straight when you catch, but you can't be out of reach of your fingertips at the same time. That's textbook, perfectly done. You don't need to do much more than stay on the bar. They can even come off once. Easy money right there. Piece of cake. Good start by Max. Double twisting, double layout. Way up there, 15 feet plus in the air. Four more to go for Nebraska, and they're going to have a share of that title. One of the stories of the day for Ohio State, though, has been this young man, Parker Thaxton, who has one of the 15 career highs as he threw up a gigantic score on the pommel horse. Parker Thaxton with a 13-5 career high on the high bar. One lonely high bar. <laughs> That's a great look, that's called the Takamoto, half Takamoto. You gotta finish those skills right near a handstand. And you're gonna get a deduction, that's a Tukachev. So it goes for Nick, Auden as well. This is a very nice routine. Giant right there. Not a huge start value, but he's hit it clean. Can he stick the landing? Big hop forward. And another step, a little out of control there, but but really well done on the bar. I'll have to be honest. Straddle Tikacha. You see those in the peck position and, and the laid out position. This just a single twisting double layout. Auden leading off for Nebraska did the double twist and double layout. I say just a full twist and double layout. <laughs> you just do one, Dean. It's, it's, that's big time gymnastics right there. Speaking of just the thousands and thousands, I guess millions of people following JR are starting to get hungry for a club sandwich. We'll see if one of these gymnasts can bring it home. Cole Partridge. The, 14-1 career high. Coming off a 13-1. Back to Odd in the 13-7-5. So, oh, and that was a big break. That was the half talk mode. Way short of the handstand. You got a great look at that. Oh, but that was nice. There's the laid out to Kachev. You can do another one. Why not? Straddle. Well, that big break on the half Takamoto, probably a half a point. But that is inconsequential. They just need to avoid the big catastrophe. And so far, to, through two routines, they've done, done just that. There's the full twisting double lap. A little piked in the air. Two for two for Nebraska. They just need three more, maybe only two more. Right there, look how flat that is. It's almost horizontal. He's not careful, he'll lose the complete value of that skill. Right there, you can see his body too piked in the air for me. If you're piked much more, you're gonna lose the value of that. It'll get downgraded to the next easiest skill in the book. Jacob Harmon, the sophomore with a 14.05 career high, you see Parker with a 13-2. That means Nebraska picked up another half a point about on the first routine. And that was flat also, well short of the handstand, at least three tenths. 
a good look at the release moves. Two in a row. Well done. Oh, and that one out of the Stalder position. And he comes, bends his hips, brings his feet into the bar, and then opens and does the Takacha out of that skill. Super difficult. Couple steps on the landing, and I was going to tell you, absolutely going to make up some ground on Nebraska in that routine, but it's going to come down to how much they take on this landing right here. Pretty straight in the air, but look at this. One, that's probably three, and that's probably, that's probably at least four tenths on that landing, but great gymnastics on the bar. Zach Tiederman, by the way, Max Odden, his previous career high was not 13.85, it was 13.65. So we're now up to 16 career highs set today here in Columbus, Ohio. Career high watch. I would like to know, can you go back and see how many career highs have been done in one meet before this is over? Let's see if we set a record. I'll get right on that. Tiedermann's career high is a 14.65 for the senior from Wilsonville, Oregon. Regular season All-American on this event, transferred from Iowa after they dropped their program there, unfortunately. Very nice skill on one arm. It's called the Zoli Men. The Chinese gymnast. Beautiful, you can see right at the end of his fingers when he caught that Tkachev in the laid out position. There's one in the pike. Let's do all the positions on that Tkachev. Nebraska can feel that regular season title. Couple small steps, but that was great gymnastics. And gonna be another very nice score for the Cornhuskers. Look at that, right on his fingertips. You're gonna do multiple releases in a row. That is how you have to catch them, right at the end with straight arms. Looked like he just needed to bend his knees a little bit there. Came in kind of stiff-legged. Harmon with a 13-3. Next up for the Buckeyes is Chase Davenport Mills. He has one of the 16 career highs set today. That was set earlier. He's got a 13-2-5 career high on the high bar. He's coming off a 12.05 in his last time up on the high bar for the Buckeyes, who are seventh in the nation, by the way, on this apparatus. A couple of sophomores and a freshman to start off this rotation for the Buckeyes. Chase right here being the freshman from Roswell, Georgia. Just like Toby Liang. Tiederman in with a 13.75 for the Cornhuskers. Again, running the straddle position. A little arched coming out of that second release move. That will be a small deduction. Well done from Ohio State. Unfortunately, it's looking like too little too late for the Buckeyes to make a run, but love to see them finishing strong here regardless. Twisting double out again, a little bit of pike in the air. You can see those get stretched out a little bit more. A little straighter body. He's going to be fun to watch. Absolutely. A lot of great gymnastics yet to come from him. Sam Phillips has been 
a rock for Nebraska for a long time. In fact, when you look at this and you're saying, hey, for the first time ever, we got a chance to bring home a trophy, get the shirts, get the hats. I can't think of two better for Nebraska to close it out. Sam Phillips and Taylor Christopoulos. Absolutely, are, Sam. Uh, Sam coming off that trouble he had on Parallel Bars. I'll tell you what, yeah, they want to share this regular season title, but that is just the beginning. They desperately want to win the Big Ten tournament here at the end of the year. Coming up, that is that is the big prize for them in a couple weeks. Well, Can they do it? Yep. It's interesting that it's at Illinois. When you and I, as you see that move there, when we first broke into this, Justin Spring, when he was coaching now Daniel Ribeiro, they were so good on the high bar. Yeah, they were they were fantastic back in the day. And just Sam Phillips pulling out all the stops. Man, that is hard to do. Zoling in late in the routine after you've been gripping the bar for all of those skills. To have the grip to still do it. At that point, this this routine is stacked. A 15-4 start, double twisting, double layout like a toothpick in a club sandwich. That is gonna do it, I would say, <laughs> for the Nebraska Cornhuskers. Sam Phillips coming back from that peril of our routine. Well, this is a great look. Kovacs double back over the bar, and that is what the gymnasts are going through on that skill. Here it is though. Nobody's hungry anymore, Dean Linky, because that is a stuck landing. They said it. Little turkey, little bacon, little tomato, little lettuce, throw the mayo, get the bread, and throw the toothpick in there, JR. I am starving. <laughs> wow, great moment for Sam Phillips, especially after that difficulty on Parallel Bars. You know he wanted redemption, and that is a moment to get it. Kazuki Hayashi, the senior, with a career high of 14. He set his season high in the last meet at 13.95, which is great because he's battled through injuries in his career. Came in highly heralded. We've seen a lot of those special moments, but I like the fact that he's peaking right now, particularly knowing that this is gonna be the home of the NCAA Finals. Big release right there, full twisting Kovacs. It's called the Coleman. Not done yet, there's another Kovacs. to Katja. Straddle to Katja, right into the pike. Got a little, kind of tweaked to the side there, but really handled it well. This is, this is big. Can we get another stuck landing? Full twisting double layout, little slide of the feet. You know, Hayashi went to a gym called Apollo Gymnastics, and he was coached by Jason Furr during his time there. Jason Furr, one of the biggest, high-flyingest gymnasts I've ever seen, and it looks like it rubbed off. The Coleman, full twisting double back over a steel bar that's about 10 feet in the air. Man, tell me these guys aren't courageous or crazy. <laughs> one of the two. Rustam Sherapov, gotta love that. He knows he's got some athletes on this team. 14-3 for Phillips. That's a new career high. We're at 17. Nebraska has posted the top three scores on the high bar so far with Phillips, Auden, and Teeterman. And here's Taylor Christopoulos. He's got a 13-9-5 career high. And that's how the Sam Phillips routine would do it. Technically, that's not true because Taylor could fall apart here, but he really just has to get through this, and there's another Coleman. He could even come off the bar and still win it for Nebraska, but I don't think he's gonna. He wants to finish this the right way. Yeah. 
This will be it. Double twisting, double layout, and it's another stuck. Oh, I should have saved the toothpick for the end. <laughs> It's too risky not to do it, but man, what a finish for Taylor Christopoulos. I'll take two club sandwiches. That was fantastic. John Robinson, one of the coaches there, giving him a hug. This is just beautiful, too. Look at his feet glued together. No one does it better. Nebraska has done it. For the first time since entering the Big Ten, they have won something as they'll share the regular season title with Coach Ribeiro's Fighting Illini. And Illinois will host the Big Ten Championships coming up as Caden Spencer will try to shake off the P-Bars and see what he can do. He's got a 14-4 career high. Really wanting to finish big, beautiful. Three to Kachev streak, and so difficult. The first one out of the Stalter, which we talked about before, but to connect two more after that, incredibly hard. Oh, that was really flat. That was the full Takamoto. We saw the half talk earlier. That's the half. Both of those need to be more towards the handstand. Now. Those are very hard to do with no deduction. Great finish for the Buckeyes and Caden Spencer. Great gymnastics down the stretch. Just in double layout. Holds on to it. I think Rustam Sharapov can say his team performed today. Wasn't perfect, but they performed. Rustam, a class act. He just came over to congratulate Chuck Chamelka. As you see the high bar results, the final score as Nebraska has earned a Big Ten regular season title. You wanted a smile, Chuck gave you a smile. He was saving it, he was saving it. They will share that regular season title, but that's, it's a small step, but a big one at the same time for Nebraska. They want the, they want the conference title at the tournament coming up, just something to build on for sure. Congratulations, though, to Chuck and the Cornhuskers with a win over Ohio State. They share the regular season title with Illinois. The Nebraska Cornhuskers come into Columbus, Ohio, and even Rustav Sheripov bowing down to Chuck Chimelka as Nebraska shares a piece of the Big Ten regular season title with Illinois with a 4-18.2. And Ohio State with a 4-14.1. Here is the 15-year top man for Nebraska, Chuck Chimelka. And Chuck, a reason to celebrate. You'll bring home the hats and the T-shirts and a part of the regular season title. What's it mean to the Cornhuskers? Unbelievable feeling. First time ever for us. And uh, a lot of hard work went into this. I'm so proud of the guys. They fought. they It's been a five-year process and oh my gosh I'm so pleased this is such a good feeling hey Chuck you, you guys not only got a share of that regular season title got the win today but you did it with a, a season high score and you guys really you know you had you weren't perfect by any means but golly pretty close to perfect you guys look like you're peaking at the right time would you agree thanks John yeah yes I, I will I we're we're doing Really good routines in practice, and it's showing here in the meets. And uh, I'm real proud of. Uh, really, we only had one really major mistake, uh, so we did well. It was great, Coach. There were 19 career highs set between both teams, bringing big time gymnastics at the right time of the year. What do you think of that? 19 career highs. I would have never known that if you didn't say that. Wow. Everybody did a good job. I mean, Ohio State, they were tough today. They fought hard. Um, congratulations to them. They're well coached and a great team. And uh, I'm just still so proud of our team and our guys and our staff and just everybody that works with our guys and make them better day in and day out. Chuck, I know you want that uh, Big Ten tournament title as well. There's three outstanding Big Ten teams lurking out there. What, uh, what do you got to do between now and then to make that one happen? 
Well, clean up some areas still, stick more. We still gave away a lot of points there on the ground, but you know, we just get back in the gym in two days and get going. Chuck, you are first class. Enjoy that ring as a regular season champion, sharing that with Illinois. Congratulations. Have Thanks, a safe bud. trip back to Lincoln. Thanks so much. Appreciate you guys. Take a look at some of the highlights for the Cornhuskers. We said it would be a big horse routine, and it was from Giles. They were just methodical. Ball kind of just went through the motions almost. It seemed like just hit after hit. That, though, arguably the highlight moment. Not that that technically clinched the meet, but it sure made it hard for the Buckeyes to have any shot. And you knew they were feeling it at that moment. And that's Illinois as they won the share of the regular season with a win over Penn State. So congratulations to Coach Rivera as well, right? Yeah, absolutely. Daniel Rivera doing an outstanding job in Champaign. And this Big Ten Championship, you know, there's a couple studs on that Michigan team, a couple Olympic hopefuls, uh, Fred Richard and and uh, Paul Judah that are going to have something to say about this. But it is going to be it's going to be a barn burner, as they like to say. It is always an honor to work with the three time Olympian, four time Big Ten all around champion John Roethlisberger, a.k.a. J.R. Great to be with you, J.R. You too, Dean. Always a pleasure. And uh, it was a fun one today. All right, that's going to wrap it up from Columbus and the Ohio State University. Congratulations to Nebraska and Illinois, but it's the Cornhuskers today who for the first time ever win a share of the Big Ten regular season title. Coming up, it's the Big Ten today. I want to thank our amazing crew. Also want to thank my stat man, Mike Rodolfi, and of course, John Roethlisberger. For each and every one of them and all of you, I'm Dean Linke saying so long from Columbus, and congratulations to the Nebraska Cornhuskers sharing the regular season title with Illinois.